Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about Meniere disease. Meniere disease is a disease of the inner ear. We divide the ear into three components. One is the external ear, then the middle ear cavity or tympanic cavity, inner ear that is composed of vestibule and the cochlea. So it is a disease of the inner ear. So it is not a disease of the external ear, external auditory canal, even it is not a disease of the tympanic cavity or middle ear cavity. It is a disease of the inner ear that has the vestibule and the cochlea. Vestibule for the maintenance of maintenance of equilibrium and cochlea is for the sensation of hearing. So what happened? is associated with increased endolymphatic fluid pressure. We have two types of fluid in our inner ear. We have the perilymph and endolymph. Endolymph is present inside the membranous labyrinth and perilymph is present outside the membranous labyrinth inside the, inside the bony labyrinth. Okay. So there will be increased endolymphatic fluid pressure because the endolymphatic fluid is unable to be reabsorbed to the dural venous sinuses. Okay, for some reason, the exact cause is not known. This may be a possible cause, but there is certainly increased endolymphatic fluid pressure characterized by episodic attack lasting from minutes to days of vertigo tinnitus. That is buzzing sound inside the ear or ringing sound inside the ear sensory neural hearing loss hearing loss is due to the damage to the nerve like that of the cochlear nerve damage it is not due to any type of conductive defect in the nerve passage the conductive system is not a problem to go to the to the inner ear but the the problem is in the nerve. The nerve is damaged because the receptor for the nerve is damaged also here and here. Okay, this is the vestibular part, this is the cochlear part. This is for hearing, this is for maintenance of balance and equilibrium, along with that of the cerebellum. It works, it maintains for the balance and the equilibrium. Okay, sensation of fullness and pressure in the in the ear. Positional nystagma. Nystagma means involuntary oscillatory movement of the eyeball. Complete inability to make head movement or even to stand passively. This may happen in acute condition. Okay, that may be possible. So again, if you go to the inner ear, this is the cochlea. This is cochlea here. And if you have section of the cochlea, you will get the bone here the bitter spot of temporal bone certainly this is the spiral ganglion spiral ganglion for the for the cochlear nerve and we have the cochlear duct here that contains the endolymph and this is present here these two space these are the space for the for the perilymph here perilymph here endolymph okay so this is the cochlear duct this part is called cochlear duct okay so we got that now if we have a section of the semicircular duct again we will get the semicircular duct containing the membranous in this is the membranous labyrinth containing the endolymph and this part bony labyrinth contains the perilymph so there will be pressure buildup and there may be mixture of the endolymph to the perilymph mixture of the endolymph to the perilymph that may happen okay a sensation of fullness and pressure in the ear position on nice segments gait ataxia person can to, cannot maintain balance and gait complete inability to make head movement and even stand passively that happen in acute minor disease okay we got that now 
Minier disease, what are the causes? Most cases are sporadic, but familial occurrence has also been described, may be associated with mutation in cochlean gene on chromosome 14 Q12 Q13. So there is some genetic support so that it may run in the families or it may happen sporadically without any family history. Onset between the ages of 20 to 50, acute attack may occur at intervals ranging from weeks to year. Men are more affected than women. Okay, so men, M E N, men are affected, all the men are affected more than that of the women. The membranous labyrinth containing endolymph swells and rupture, intermixing endolymph and perilymph, therefore, receptor function for bo both vestibular and cochlear receptor functions are impaired. Treatment, how we manage a patient of Meniere's disease? Treatment by diuretic, what diuretic? Hydrochlorothiazide and trimeter. Okay, so that we can maintain the appropriate potassium balance. Okay, this is a diuretic and this is also a diuretic. So there will be no shortage of potassium because we are getting the potassium sparing diuretics along with this hydrochlorothiazide. Salt restricted diet is very important. Other drug antihistamines, especially in case of acute attack, but this will work for sustained action for prolonged function, the hydrochlorothiazide. So we may get relief from, by means of antihistamine in case of acute condition. Anticholinergic benzodiazepine, sympathomimetic drugs. Okay, surgery. Do we need surgery for Meniere's disease? Yes, sometimes medical treatment is not successful, we need surgical treatment like endolymphatic shunting. So if we can make a shunt from the endolymph to the peritoneal cavity, then it will be absorbed in the peritoneal cavity without causing any problem. Application of vestibular toxic substance, another modality when surgery is not possible, then surgeon what they do they with the consultation with that of the oncologist otolaryngologist okay they inject the the gentamicin okay that is a an antibiotic aminoclox antibiotic that has some type of vestibular toxic effect so it will damage the the vestibular nerve so person will not have the headache headache will be will be will disappear due to the this medication okay so surgery yes surgery is is done but not in the early stage application of vestibular toxic substance like what like gentamicin we can inject in the perilymph area so we got that and that's all about the the minier disease very common condition and we have found that we may have vertigo, nausea, vomiting, and we may have tinnitus or deafness all together may happen. And that's all about the Meniere's disease. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Please share the information with your friends and please support my channel. Please subscribe me and have a nice day. Bye now.